Hello, this is Isaac Lundgren. I've been an Adobe Photoshop user for a long time, in fact, since 1997. So when I heard that Adobe had finally dropped their new iPad Pro version of Adobe Photoshop, I couldn't wait to get my hands on it and give you my first uh, initial reactions for the software. So here we go. I was so excited to download it, I gave it a nice prominent place on my dock. And uh, after the initial setup of uh, typing in your Adobe login, you get uh, this screen. And um, you can create a new here. You can give it a custom size or whatever you need. This is all fine. This is all normal. You can change the resolution. You can change the width and height and whatnot. And we've got a nice blank screen. It initially seems uh, nice and responsive. Uh, these were closed at first, but without too much effort, I located uh, the area for the layers. You've got just a, a small, uh, this would be a small list of your layers here or a more larger view of your layers in this way. Uh, we've got uh, a handful of tools on the left here and at first it was kind of exciting. Oh, here's Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop. But after a while I realized uh, it's uh, not as fleshed out as uh, normal Photoshop would be. And not that that's a bad thing because, uh, you know, you kind of simplify to maybe a few key features that are useful. But in this case, it's like there's no really one thing that is very useful. Everything is kind of limited. I'll give you some examples. At first, it seems fine that you, you know, you've got uh, brushes you can work with in here uh, with a few uh, simple features to adjust them. But I'm finding uh, what is adjustable and doable isn't uh, as good or as useful as uh, the Procreate app, for example, and uh, not as intuitive. Uh, for example, um, it doesn't know the difference between when I touch with my finger or when I use the pen. Um, when I use it, you can see there is a difference. It does recognize uh, the sensitivity and uh, oh, recognizes the tilt as well, so that's useful. Uh, but if I used Procreate, for example, uh, Procreate knows when I'm switching between the pen and uh, my finger, and it's programmable to recognize uh, the finger, and right now the finger is set to the uh, smudge tool. In Photoshop, that's not the kind of uh, kind of thing you have in version 1. Now that's not to say they won't ever add it, but uh, just right off the bat that's not uh, super useful or helpful. I mean the brush functionality is fine, it's kind of like a, a simplified version of what they have, but uh, if you're looking for an iPad experience, there are other apps that do painting better. Um, we do have layer functionality, but that is no longer unique to Photoshop. That has not been unique to Photoshop uh, in a decade or so. Many programs now have layer functionality, so that's nothing to kind of woo you. Now, if they were on the uh, iPad first thing, that could be something that was unique and useful, but it's just simply not the case. Uh, you can integrate um, some photos into here. I can take... Uh, this, uh, this is an illustration we'll be doing in my um, art class. I teach 4th uh, through 6th grade art uh, as my uh, day job right now. So I can attach a photo, I can put a new layer on it, and I can work on an, on an additional layer here. So I can kind of do some work here. I can change the, uh, the size. I guess that functionality is alright once you get used to it. You can see your size changing here. I can change the... Yeah, some other options. Flow, angle. It does give you a few more options. Well, there are a few additional options that you can change as well. Your blending mode. You can tell this is a release that they cared a lot about and tried to get everything just right, but almost in the sense that they tried to get everything just right that they really <laughs> didn't get much of anything right. I mean, we have a really limited set of tools here, uh, which we don't need every possible tool available. But the tools that they have, it's the interface is not as intuitive. Like, you can't just stare at this and guess what everything is for. 
Um, I mean, we've got this number here. I know that this has got to be the uh, brush size because I've used Photoshop before, but if someone was in here and they're like, wait a minute, my brush is too big, uh, how am I able to change that? They're not going to be able to just kind of figure it out. I mean, it wouldn't take that long to figure it out and maybe get used to it. It just does not seem uh, like it, it's as intuitive as before. They've got all this space up here, and the only useful information we have right now is the title, which I don't even care about or need to see all the time. Uh, they used to have the uh, those features here, and maybe they're trying to put them closer to your hands so possibly you could work this way. I mean, who knows? Um, the layers, your two options for using the layers, you've got um, a little small thumbnail list in this view, and you've got like this enormous view that offers maybe more information and where you can see uh, more about the layers, layers or have more features here, but it takes up a huge portion of the screen. And uh, it's like they're setting it up to be this dominant desktop type app, but with functionality that is even less so than, uh, than many Photoshop clones for iPad already. Uh, we do have the Layer Properties button here, where you can get a few options here, but these are just very limited options. There's nothing in the effects or the Smart, smart Filters. Um, I don't know if we can change the dimensions at this point, but we can see the dimensions at least, I suppose. We can adjust uh, a few photographic items, so I mean, using Photoshop for photos. Uh, oh, that's on my little brush layer there. Let's uh, undo that here and put it on something more useful. Let's try this one. As for using Photoshop for the photos, I mean we do have some of the the functionality that you would get on the desktop, but uh, there are plenty of apps that offer this functionality and they kind of do just fine and Photoshop used to be the king in all of these areas, but in this case, I am not quite so sure. Let me come back to here, add another clip adjust layer. We do have some of this fine-tuned functionality, but this is this is novelty stuff. This is not uh, this is not uh, key features in the sense that it used to. And here they are touting them as some of the only features they have now, I suppose. They do have one retouching option. I used to do photo retouching for years. So let me import and open from the camera roll. We'll go with a iPad portrait. They do have a few um, retouching options uh, here. Well, a few. Actually, they have one retouching option. Um, and that is the healing tool. So, I mean, you can uh, strike out some... Oops, that's on the brush. Uh, where are we here? Healing tool. Let's check out the size. Where is the size? Is it giving me a preview? Well, that's a glitch. It's not even showing me the preview of how big this is going to be anymore. But, uh, I mean, the healing brush has always been good in Photoshop, and it works uh, pretty good here. But um, I prefer, actually, the patch tool. That's not available. I mean, the healing tool... Um, works fine, but it's just so limiting compared to what you could normally do on Photoshop. And now um, so many apps have like uh, auto filters that uh, kind of take care of that business for you, and not that Photoshop needs to get into the auto filter business. I'm just saying that iPad is supposed to be about convenience and functionality. Photoshop is supposed to be about uh, professional level tools. And it just seems like they're trying to give us something that is not super useful in this uh, first iteration. I mean, brush tool, eraser tool, paint bucket tool, but it's there's not a whole lot we can do with these things. Type tool uh, is so limited, they offer light and bold uh, for their options, whereas on the... Uh, desktop version, I mean, you can do bevel, emboss, drop shadow, uh, you can change the direction of the light, and just, we don't have any of that here. And uh, plain text items just aren't that useful at this point. Um, it just seems like some things need more, uh, more features, 
You don't need every possible feature, but something has to have more. You can't have everything so stripped down that there's just uh, not a lot that you can do in this uh, in this project, or not have anything that you can do uh, really well, I suppose. So what am I trying to say here? I suppose I'm trying to say I'm really glad that Photoshop is finally taking um, an amazing thing like the iPad Pro a little more seriously and how it can be used as a portable studio, but they're not quite getting um, what makes the iPad uh, Pro so magical. It's the uh, usability, being able to find a feature when you need it and change it without uh, too much trouble, um, knowing where to put things, uh, knowing what shortcuts to keep and what shortcuts uh, aren't that useful. And um, I think they just need to rework it a little bit in those regards, and they really need to make something in here uh, feature-rich. You can't have everything so basic that it's not really that practical, practical, there's no practical usability. It's, um, there's nothing in here that is like so inspiring that it makes me want to dive in here and just use this. Um, I'm more excited about exploring other new apps that are um, competitors to Photoshop that are very intuitive and in doing things um, quite a bit better. For example, Procreate for uh, the creation of art assets. And they have layers and they have a lot of other useful things. And we're just not, uh, we're just not quite ready for this. And honestly, um, I used to be uh, just an amazing uh, Photoshop fan. Uh, for years and years and years, and I would tout everything um, Adobe. But in this case, um, I think ever since they moved to subscription base and everything in the cloud, they have sort of lost their uh, motivation to be really competitive and innovative. Before that point, um, if you didn't uh, like the features that they included in the latest version, you wouldn't purchase the latest version. You would just skip it and continue to use the older versions. And uh, older versions of Photoshop are still functional and very fantastic, and I think that's kind of a problem they've worked themselves into. So they're kind of forcing everybody into the subscription model, but now they've lost their motivation to be innovative. I mean, this is not innovative. This is pretty basic, and they're taking like the basic things of Photoshop and kind of working it into an app, but it's really not that impressive to me. And um, not that they can't be innovative or impressive. It's just that in this case, uh, I think they're giving us a product that uh, is not quite ready. It's not very impressive. It's not exciting to use. It's just like, oh, that's okay. It has some of Photoshop features in here. Now they're going to be touting, oh, but look, you can, it saves automatically and it'll end up uh, here, which you can access from all your devices. Well, that's just another way of tying you into the uh, the Photoshop and the Adobe ecosystem of, you know, forcing you into keeping their subscription, which I still am anti-subscription for software. And that's not what this video is about, not just bashing uh, subscription services for software. But I'm saying uh, their angle is trying to tie you into their subscription services, so they're making those aspects really convenient. There's just no real reason to use Photoshop on the iPad right now. I mean, they have a handful of features, but other apps do them better. They may not do all of them uh, in each app, but there's a handful of apps that do them better. You're not tied to a subscription. It is handy to be able to um, have the official link with some of your documents that you can open up. Um, and use across multiple devices. I mean, I, I suppose many people would find that feature fascinating and useful, but it's not must upgrade worthy. I mean, I'm sure plenty of people will find that uh, addition fascinating and useful. But to me, that's kind of like their big thing that they're offering right now. And it's just not a reason to jump in and subscribe to Photoshop for this app. I don't, I don't really think we're gaining anything with this app. I hope that makes sense. So overall consensus, honestly, I think Adobe missed the mark on this one, and I know they've been spending a lot of time working on it. I mean, honestly, there's no glitches in it. It seems to be polished and functioning. It's just not that functional. It's not that exciting to use. It's not that useful. 
And since I'm fairly new to the iPad Pro, I've been exploring different apps, and some of them are very exciting and inspiring to use, and they kind of get your creative juices flowing. Kind of what Photoshop used to do for the desktop, but it is, uh, it's just not happening for me on the uh, iPad. And it's not to say that they won't ever make a comeback with later versions and kind of uh, uh, spice it up, make it interesting, make it more user-friendly, make something in it useful to where somebody would actually want to use it or need to use it. Either flesh out the brushes, simplify it, but also <laughs> expand it at the same time. Uh, if that's a possibility, or even bring in the smudge tool and let your finger use it. I mean, take ideas from what other people have done, as long as they're not copyrighted, I suppose, and make it feature-rich, make us want to use it, let it be our all-in-one for at least something to, to give us a real reason to use it. Because right now, uh, opening it up, I'm just as happy just closing it up and say, okay, maybe next version. I wouldn't say go back to the drawing board, but I'm hoping in future versions they can really rework it and uh, turn it into something useful. Right now it seems like a, a novelty that is not that impressive. What do you guys think of the new Photoshop? It just came out, Photoshop for iPad, iPad Pro. Let us know what you think in the comments and uh, we can discuss it down there. Hope you're all doing well. See you in the next video.